perform in certain venues and places like that and you perform, you have a brand new nervousness because you're in front of people. There might not be not one single person in the audience that you even know. Now, you might not even know any of the poets that are performing. You're just standing in there as Tim Jackson and no one knows you. Sure. That's scary. And that's what lets you know that there is something going on. If they want to yeah. name it a renaissance, that's fine with me, but there is something going on artistically because Durham, the city itself, has grown so much and become so much more diverse. And with all these new and improved living areas right there in the heart of downtown Durham, it's going to always be new and fresh sets of people walking through and enjoying the art. And people are strangers and never met each other before. And you're talking about things that you've been talking about for 20 years, but you're talking to somebody that have no idea what you're talking about. And they've been yeah. living here the same 20 years you have. Definitely. Well, so there's definitely, definitely the something going on. And it's beautiful to see. Yeah, there's a great the mix of... Huh? I said definitely. I agree with you. Definitely stay on the phone, but don't go anywhere. Just keep on the line. I think I've got my other guest on the line, too, and that might be Mr. Freelon. So let's see if Pierce is on the line. Uh, uh, okay, Pierce, 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 Pierce Freelon... In, in language arts, that's my man. Like, do you remember when the Haytide did the Hip Hop Festival? Yep. And it was like they had the last poets, and then they had Pierce Freelon, and he was in his he was in high school, and they had the little rap group Language Arts. That's how far me and Pierce Freelon go back. And I didn't see him go from language arts, the rap group while he was in high school, to run it from mayor and Afrofuturism. You see what I'm saying? That's a renaissance going on. Most definitely. definitely. Stay, stay on the line there. Um, is, uh, that, do we have the other line, Dean? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah, I was asking Dean. Hey, hey, um, yeah, we got Jeff Ulysses on. Yeah, get ready to bring him into the studio. But before you talk to him, I got to do this one quick drop. All right? All right. Are you enjoying the smoothest conversation in podcasting? Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Hi, this is DJ Smooth Jazz, syndicated radio host and co-owner of Portfolio Group, LLC. Your smooth jazz lifestyle and entertainment group with offices in Durham, North Carolina. Portfolio Group, LLC specializes in promoting the lifestyle of smooth jazz listeners with the promotion of smooth jazz events and the distribution of African-American-owned wines. For more information, PortfolioGroupLLC.com, or you can swing by my secondary site, DJSmoothJazz.com. Now back to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. All right, man, we're back. Again, this is Jeff Willisie on the line. Welcome to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Sir. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. appreciate you guys having me on your show. It's an honor. Thank you. No doubt. Yeah, definitely. Take it away, Mark. You got it. Go ahead. So who is this again? This is uh, Jeff Ulysses. Oh, hey, Jeff. So, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about what you've got going on. We've had Tim on, and I'm hoping that Pierce will be calling in as well. But tell us a little bit more about what you've got going on, and then we'll continue the conversation with Tim, and I think Pierce might be calling as well. Absolutely, absolutely, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm a uh, youth development uh, and educational consultant. Uh, i.e. I'm a social emotional specialist. Uh, my work is really rooted and grounded within um, youth development, but what I like to call holistic youth development. My work is more so um, social emotional uh, and restorative, you know, at heart, whereas I really take young people through self-management. I take young people through self-awareness. I, I take young people through responsible decision-making, um, you know, just a sense of social awareness. And so, uh, the services that my company provides young people are youth financial education. Uh, I have a program also it's called Alchemic Solutions, and we're transmuting the narratives uh, of young men of color um, and affinity groups here in, in, in New York City. So I'm really – most I'm based in New York, um, but I've been doing some travel, you know, around the tri-state areas and also some, some things out the country as well, um, just working with young people, empowering young people really – uh, it's been a great, it's really been a great ride for me and an a, a, a amazing journey. I really didn't see myself uh, a long time ago. I didn't see myself kind of doing the work that I'm doing now because I, you know, just because of my past and some things that I've been through and some challenges, you know, I didn't really know that 
this is where life would bring me, uh, whereas I'm, I'm just a, a full-time youth development education consultant, a full-time youth empowerment speaker, uh, you know, creating financial literacy programs for young people, uh, coaching, doing some professional development with established organizations, um, doing some leadership training as well, man, and um, also I'm an author as well. Uh, a couple months, of, about two months ago, I released my first book, uh, all about my money, teaching youth and young adults and millennials how to build, manage, and sustain wealth. And so, uh, yeah, man, that's that's really that's the world of, of of my work and what I do. I'm also educated. I'm an educator at heart. Uh, I've got my master's in education, and also have I'm in process with my second master's in divinity now, and I'm on a PhD track. Uh, to attain my Ph.D. in youth development and family studies as well. Yeah, and I'm sure that Tim would be able to relate to that because, like he's mentioned before, he's definitely got uh, kids of his own. And I'm sure one of the things that you're teaching your kids is how to be financially stable and to make sure that they're understanding the importance of being financially stable. I mean, we even have people, like you mentioned, that you're in your uh, 40s, uh, Tim. So I know we even have people in their 40s and even in their 50s that are oftentimes having a hard time with finances because we're oftentimes mm-hmm. not as responsible as we should be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think financial stewardship is important. You know, I think just the idea of management, right? And I, I think there's a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, I want, you know, I want I want a million dollars. You know what I mean? But, you know, are you really ready for a million dollars if you can't manage 100K? If you can't manage 100K, can you manage 10K? Right, you know, if you can't manage ten k, can you manage, you know, one k? And so I think, you know, again, you know, when when we, you know, more so when we're really in the world of just financial literacy, I think management is key, right? And I think it's something that what I tell the young people all the time. I said, listen, you know, in light of the conversation of management, I said, listen, proper planning prevents poor pockets. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, and that's what management is all about. You got to have a plan. You got to have a budget. You got to you got to create a budget. You know. I was actually talking to a gentleman earlier. It was actually a white gentleman, but I was talking to him at one of the coffee shops, and he was actually talking about that because he works with a um, an insur- he's an insurance salesman. But he's talking to me mm-hmm. about how he feels, and I was wondering if you feel the same thing that too many of our young people now that are let's say twenty, thirty, whatever, they've got too caught up in the whole concept of feeling like you know maybe they're going to live forever or not willing to actually start doing financial planning. So they don't want to think about insurance. They don't want to think about financial planning. They don't even want to think about, you know, the fact that we all have a termination date and that we all won't be on the planet forever. You know, I'm personally rooting for 200, but, you know, I probably won't make it, but that's what I'm rooting for. But <laughs> we all know that that's not the real, realization of what folks go through and everything. So do you find that as a, somebody that's writing about finances and stuff, that there's uh, too many of us that are not doing enough advanced planning and then we get to be, 50, 60, 70, and we're even in a harder situation because a lot of times what they look at is your current health and your age. So if you, even yeah. if you're in good health, if you're older, then your rates are going to be higher. Yeah, 100%. Oh, absolutely, man. And I think, you know, and then when we get into those situations, you know, it's, you know, we're sitting there eating, eating Wonder Bread and sitting there wondering why, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, and so, but I think, it, it, it speaks to our young people not necessar- not really having a vision um, and, our, and our young people being sh- uh, short-sighted rather than, you know, far-sighted. And, 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 that, and that's the conversation you, you talk about, right, management, right, you know, a sense of fiscal prudency but also saving. And I think that, again, that a lot of times we, you know, we, we, we say, hey, saving your money and, and planning for the future is all about discipline. Yes, it is true. That is that is absolutely 100% true, but also to take into consideration vision. Vision is important, having a vision. You can't – if you can't see, how can you save, right? How far you can see determines how much you can save. And so it's important that our young people begin to have a vision now. Yes, be disciplined now. Yes, combat consumerism now. Yes, do those things now. But it's important that, again, that we spark vision and imagination and a sense of ingenuity and creativity within our young people now that they say, hey, look, I've got a vision for my life. I've got a sense of intentionality. You know, uh, I'm living with a sense of intentionality uh, with my life. I'm, 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 going, I'm, I'm going to live my life, and I'm not going to allow life to live me. Right, and so I think it's important that our young people just begin to get in the driver's seat of life and grab their lives by the by, by the horns and begin to take ownership over their lives and begin to get into the world of insurance, get into the world of fiscal prudency and management and things of that nature and savings. Again, if you don't have vision, how can there be provision? Right, you know. So again, so you have to have vision for the provision. If not, 
you know, you're going to be sitting there wondering, man, I, I wish, I, I wish I did this. I wish I could have done this. You know, at 50, at 60 years old, man, I really should have started saving when I was younger. You know, so again, so I think it's important that you know when we meet with our young people, or just you know, we're just folks in general. In, in general, I think it's important that we say, listen, you know, we need to be talking about developing a sense of intentionality, right? And I think it's something to, to consider is that power goes only where focus is, and so I think we need to redirect our focus and redirect our intention and live with a sense of intention. Yeah, because I know that one of the things that seems to be happening in society is we have more and more entrepreneurs coming into the world, um, and even in our own community, more and more entrepreneurs. But sometimes I wonder Mm -hmm. about the entrepreneurs, whether they actually have, in addition to whatever their entrepreneurship is, whatever that product might be, whether that's a book, whether that's an invention, whether that's a whatever, if they're actually doing enough of the planning with the finances in addition to the entrepreneurship. I know a lot of times they're going for trying to win awards to keep the business going or to do things of that Mm -hmm. nature, but I sometimes wonder if there's enough actual continuation of understanding the finances, even when they're trying to be entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely, man. I, and I think, you know, there's there's a uh, there's a stat out there that says that most businesses, that you'll know that you'll know the the third year of your business will determine its, determine its rise uh, or its fall or its collapse. And, you know, I understand that 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 now that we want to be our own bosses, um, that we want to you know have our own. Um, but before having your own, I think it's important that you have to be faithful to another man's vision. And I think that you have to you know how can you truly be ready for your own, truly manage your own if you haven't had mentors, right? How can you really and truly be an entrepreneur without having people? Um, without having, you know, without surrounding yourself with folks that are better than you, without having surrounded yourself with folks that are in the same industry as you, right, or folks having done the things that you desire to do and where now you're gleaning from their best practices and now you're taking those best practices that you've gleaned and now you're practicing those things within your company, within your business, truly where now, like, you literally have, you're laying the foundation. And I think that before we even begin the conversation, hey, hey, yeah, we've always, we've got all these entrepreneurs out there and, you know, they're, hey, either you set it, you're setting yourself up or you're setting yourself up for success or you're setting yourself up for failure, you've got to go back to your foundation. And your foundations has to be, um, stable, it's got to be, it's got to be sure. Because when that rain comes, man, when you know, because as an entrepreneur, living the life as an entrepreneur, you don't get consistent income. You know, as you know, as as working a nine to five, you know, your checks aren't coming in weekly or biweekly. So you really have to be prepared. You really have to have planned ahead. You really have to say, you know what, hey, I'm going to manage, um, you know, I'm going to manage my part time job because let me tell you something. There's some folks out there that, you know what. They're part of that 6% of entrepreneurs who are in there full time. And I'm one of those guys, you know, that, hey, I, you know, I don't have a part-time job. I don't have a, a side hustle or nothing like that. This is my bread and butter. This is my baby. So it's just like, for me, I had to say, you know what, I have to really take a hard look at what I'm doing and say, look, and ask myself, am I really prepared for this? Am I really ready for this life? You know? Wow. So, uh, Tim, if you're still there with me, what time? What, at what point did you get involved in trying to think about your own financial situation? Like you said, you became a poet because of a hard life situation where you were robbed, and now you're having to teach your kids. So if you're still there with me, at what point did you start teaching her, and at what point did you start thinking about your financial planning? Oh, man, I've been out well. Like he just said, I started thinking about my finances when I was sitting around eating Wonder Bread wondering. <laughs> so, um <laughs> We 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 all reach a, a point in our lives where we kind of like realize we have overextended ourselves financially because, you know, your lights are getting cut off, you're running out of gas, um, you can't go out on a date. You know, it's just a bunch of things that's going on in your life. And when you're grown, if you've never been taught those things, once you're living on your own and bills are coming in, like he said, it's too late to start to start a vision when you are already in the hole. So now you got to put together a vision to get yourself out the hole to start your vision of where you really want to be. So I'm um, just finding yourself in a, in a financial hole. Like I said, um, getting my apartment kicked in and everything being stolen and those places in life where you got to start over. 
And the whole time with each 